Good evening and welcome to Anita Traverso Gallery and to the exhibition Silence and Noise. It is with great delight that I stand here tonight to announce and officiate the second solo exhibition of Adam Marcuson's extraordinary work in Melbourne and at ATG. I'm not going to say much about Adam's work because we are privileged to have our guest speaker, Simon Gregg, who will far more eloquently connect you to this work because that's his job in life. <laughs> to bring the art of gifted and creative talents together with collectors, art lovers and the uninitiated. Hello Matteo, come and join us. Hello. <laughs> but I do want to say this, that I feel honoured to show Adam's work and so proud when I hear the feedback in response to his work as I did today. For instance, when a visitor said, you know, it's so rare to walk into an exhibition and really feel you want something. And he said, I want that, <laughs> and I want that, and he was just over the moon. And this guy sees a lot of art every single day in what he does for a job. I'm not going to let you know who it is, but that's the truth. So I was impressed by that comment. Now, I know our guest speaker is also more than just a little bit fond of Adam's work. Simon Gregg is the curator of the Gippsland Art Gallery in Sale, and it was his brainchild to put together the absolutely powerful and beautiful two-year national touring exhibition called Dreamweavers, in which he has included three of Adam's works. Dreamweavers is in its second location and currently at the McClellan Gallery and Sculpture Park in Lake Warren. And if you reside in Victoria, it's best you catch it now because it will only tour further away. And McClellan makes a great day out and it's a show not to be missed as Art Nation on the ABC will highlight next Sunday, I think, isn't it? Sunday week. The Sunday week. Yeah. 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 Uh, as well as curating, Simon writes essays, reviews, and his new book, The New Romantics, Darkness and Light in Australian Art, will be launched early next month, on the 8th, 8th of October specifically. So we are truly grateful for Simon's shared belief in Adam Larkison, and especially for driving more than three hours with an overnight in Melbourne's car, and uh, three hours back to sale in order to perform the role of opening tonight. So please welcome Simon Gregg. Thanks, Anita. You've embarrassed me terribly. <laughs> Um, really, the a privilege is mine to be here and to be able to be amongst Adam's work like this. Um, I mean, I would have come anyway. So, um, but um, no, really, I'm, I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, I do think Adam is one of those artists who um, is probably one of the most original and innovative artists working in Australia today. Um, and. Uh, I don't mean to embarrass you now. But, you know, um, <laughs> it's always funny talking about artist work when you see anyone yeah. around you. Um, but, you know, I think it's important to come to work with your own interpretation, and, and Adam's work certainly invites that. Um, and I'm not one of those curators who wants to know everything, how it was made, why the artist did it. I tend not to ask questions, I probably should, but, <laughs> but I don't agree. Really. I just sort of see the work and just want to be swept, up, swept away by it and um, just get taken along for the ride. And, and Adam is definitely one of those artists who, around his work, you really do just get taken to another place altogether. Um, I guess I'll, I'll sort of touch you on a couple of little things that are in the dream of the show. Um, I think with Adam's work, um, I, tend, I have, although he's entirely original and unique in this country, I do feel that he sort of taps into um, a sort of um, historic trajectory of, of art, um, sort of beginning or including Norman Spoch in the 15th century, he's worked with Garden of Earth and Delights, particularly that very dark final panel which has got all the crazy biological figures in it. Um, right through to the uh, 18th century, which we saw um, uh, Goya and um, Blake and Henry Fusely, who had an ex extraordinary work, The Nightmare, which has got a woman kind of reclining in the bed with a, with a, um, uh, a horse head poking through a curtain and a monkey sitting on top of her. It's just bizarre. <laughs> but it always kind of reminds me of Adam's book. <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, and I guess yeah, you could do a three-dimensional 
Yeah. Um, and then I guess through uh, 20th century, you see a little bit of that again in the surrealist um, Salvador Dali and the Australian surrealist James Gleason. I think touches on that a little bit also. Um, but in saying that, I wouldn't classify Adam as as a surrealist. In fact, I can't classify people at all. Um, but I do think what Adam does ties into or connects with a kind of greater field that would include the visionary and the fantastic and the sublime and the gothic and the grotesque even all these different things kind of culminate in what Adam does um, but at the same time I think Adam's work is distinctly and uniquely Australian I think it's really there um, and when I talk about Australia I'm kind of thinking about how if you're lost in the middle of the night in, in the Australian bush uh, you probably have never been through this, but I, I have, I know what it's like. And just that disorientation and you start to hear strange noises and you just think something's going to leap out and grab you. But even in the middle of the day, with the sunlight be bearing down on you and, and confronting or encountering the, the weird and bizarre flora and fauna that we have in this country. I mean, who would have thought an animal like a platypus was possible? It kind of looks like different animal pieces joined together. Things like kangaroos and even, um, uh, and the, the, the first European settlers in the 19th century, I think they were particularly struck by how weird all of the uh, the natural world was in Australia. I think it was uh, Marcus Clark who wrote about the weird melancholy of the Australian bush. He talked about the kind of grotesque nature of of the land here. He said Australia is the land of the dawning, and he described. Um, Australia has been the nature of wanting to write. It's as if it's a kind of meeting place of all different elements. Um, and I know Adam, when he talks about his work, um, talks about the influence of nature, and I think that's very much there. Um, I think the work also encompasses a lot of different contradictions. Um, I think there's there's the beautiful and there's the macabre, both coexisting very harmoniously in Adam's work. Um, I think there's certainly a darker edge to it, um, but it's also just so you know breathtakingly beautiful at the same time. Um, but I think what particularly um, sets Adam apart is the way that he engages with with dreams and with memory and with the kind of connection to to other worlds. Um, and I think in that he's an incredibly courageous artist. Because there are so few artists nowadays who just are willing to let um, their imagination take the driver's seat and just uh, let it go wherever it takes them. And I know Adam has a very intuitive approach to making his art. Um, if, if I understand correctly, you actually don't have a specific idea in mind at the end. You sort of just start making work and just see where it takes you, which I think is extraordinarily brave. And obviously, you know, it works in your case. Um, and, uh, but in, in, although a lot of your work actually, um, I feel like having a conversation, <laughs> um, kind of it, it draws from your personal dreams and experiences, and I know these pieces behind us are related to a dream that you had about wolves chasing you when you were younger. And, um, but I feel that we all kind of get that when we come to the work. Um, I think it taps into a kind of collective unconscious, a kind of um, a deep, deeper, deep seated. Um, Kind of primal instincts that we all have. I think we, we through that, we kind of have these connections to your work. Um, and I also wanted to say that Adam is just an incredible uh, craftsman. And his technical skill in producing these works. Um, I don't know anyone who can make work quite like Adam. And, um, I mean, to describe them, they would just sound, you know, ridiculous. But to actually stand in front of them, it's just utterly compelling. Um, and I think with Adam's work too, you, uh, when you encounter it, you don't know whether to go up to it and hug it or, or run away screaming. Or, um, <laughs> um, and it's ritualistic. That's the other thing I was going to say. Kind of looking at, at, at the work, trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, Adam is an incredible storyteller, but he doesn't actually give us a clear narrative, so we kind of have to work out for ourselves what's going on. He gives us the stages and the characters, and we kind of have to make, bring our own story to it. Um, um, but I wanted to say also, yes, uh, we, we, a number of the works, they're like some primitive ancient ritual going on um, that's perhaps been going on for thousands of years and 
maybe once would have made sense to us, but coming to it now, we kind of, you know, we have that kind of primal connection, but the, the actual meaning has kind of been lost a little bit. Um, Coming. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Adam and I talk, but really not about the work so much. No, we sort of talk about logistics of touring the show. I was over a class <laughs> yeah. and off. Um, but I've always kind of brought my own kind of background. I'm oh, sorry. Sharp. Sharp. Yeah, Oh, you want to go to the sharp? Okay. I'm I'm done anyway. But yeah, I've never really wanted to to you know, try to provide the, the, the ultimate affinity for account of what Adam is all about. I couldn't possibly do that. Well, I couldn't that. either. <laughs> um, yeah. And I just think, you know, I hope everybody who sees the work just gets swept away by another and gets swept away in the way that they do and um, good luck with the show. And, uh, thanks, thanks, Simon. And, yeah, thank thanks thank you so much. Very good. Everyone, just oh, thank enjoy you. the rest of the evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah.